I'm delighted tonight to be hosting because every single guest is someone that I know personally that has had a profound impact on my life. And being someone who has been acclimated to the prophetic, uh, to be around someone like my next guest who is a senior statesman in terms of prophetic and apostolic ministry, someone that moves in an incredible word of knowledge uh, and has been used by God prophetically all over the world. He's the senior pastor of Bread of Life Ministries, and he moves in an incredible anointing. I want you to warmly welcome Dr. Brian Mosley. Thank you, Mark. Bless you, sir. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Delighted. What's on your heart? I'm just delighted to be here and to hear this relationship piece. I sat there and I was just overwhelmed. The fact that we are moving into this relationship. I, I, I also uh, was encouraged because I believe that we're at a catalyst moment. Mm -hmm. I believe that God is doing something in the local church. Absolutely. Absolutely. The next move. Absolutely. It is almost as if there's a ram horn being tipped. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Yeah. And pastors are being anointed or reanointed to minister to their people. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of excitement. Um, and I, I, I sit here and I think about uh, the scripture that says, as the heart panteth mm -hmm. before the water brook. So my soul. And you can't sit here without feeling the presence of God Amen. that permeates the house. It's in your house. Don't stop. I'm delighted. I, I'm delighted because over the years I've seen God do some awesome things in churches and conferences. And I believe that this is a moment that we should uh, look at restoration. He's restoring That's the floodgates. Good. The other day, uh, after prayer, it, it, it came to me uh, that uh, we should be talking about the restoration uh, to the body of Christ, uh, moving in that area of prayer, and being sensitive to the voice of God. And every day, this is what I have been looking at. I gaze at him. Mm. I behold him. David said, uh, I come to inquire. I've come to ask him some questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so all of us need to have the kind of relationship. We go back to that again. The kind of relationship where we can draw on him. Um, and so I'm excited. I'm excited about what's happening. Uh, the good news is that the bad news isn't true. That's, That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. It isn't true. Uh, when you look over... In the book of Revelation, we win. That's right. And uh, I'm among preachers. We win. We preach it. That's right. And so we're going to win. And I, 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 I want to weigh in on this. I heard something about uh, uh, the negatives. The negatives. I sat there and thought about it. We wouldn't have power in this building. That's right. right. Without the negative lines. That's right. right. The electrician says it takes the negative and the, and positive. the positive. That's right. That's and I good. believe that it's going, those negative things in our life will wake us. We'll come to wake <clears throat> and realize that we are on the brink yeah. of some awesome things. Yeah. I, I believe that we're going to see teenagers, children in this generation embrace this relationship. You know, we grew up in the church, and we know the church lingo, mm. but God's touching yeah. babies. Mm. He's touching teenagers. I was in a meeting one time, and someone said to me, well, you know, they don't know what they're doing. Well, you didn't know how to drive. That's right. Uh, until uh, someone uh, shows you. That's right. You. And I believe that God is showing us uh, doors are opening and technology and we're reaching people in the marketplace. You know, I go out and minister, and then when I'm not on the field, I go out, and I'm a conversational person. I don't ever meet a stranger. Amen. I believe in conversational evangelism. You might start talking about the sun or the weather, but you end up talking about his power. 
Yeah. You see, and so I believe that's what we're going to have. We're going to have this kind of relationship where we can take it anywhere and everywhere. And so, Mark, I believe that where we are right now, the floodgates are open. Discover, that's right, what God, you, you were built, you were created with all of the hardware. That's right. Uh, and don't take a back seat to anyone. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I want to focus in for a moment on the prophetic and just ask you a couple of questions. You've had a profound impact on my life, on my wife's life. We've known you for a long time. You're, there's an uncanny accuracy to your word of knowledge. First, I'd like to ask you, when did it, when did it become evident to you that God was awakening this prophetic anointing? Well, I was a boy and always loved animals and old people, older people. And as a child, I would hear God talking, but I didn't understand. You know, you need someone, I guess that's what happened to uh, uh, Saul after his conversion. He needed Ananias to tell him what was happening to him. And so uh, someone told me, first of all, you have to develop a prayer life. But I was just a child growing up, like any other child. And I would pray for the dogs that I had. I had a collection of dogs. <laughs> yes, sir. Back home that. in Connecticut. Uh, I had dogs in the garage. I had dogs in the basement. And this was the fight that me and mom had. You're not going to have the dogs. When they got sick, I laid hands on them. And so it's amazing. It began then. I had these experiences. No one was there no resources? You didn't have anyone to mentor you? But I started, or I started understanding after I prayed and learned how to pray and someone took the time to say, you know, you have something. You have a gift. But you need to learn how to listen to God. That's good. So it started early. It started early in my life. I would be in school uh, and out of nowhere, I would tell somebody, you know what? Such and such. And the teacher would say, don't say that. I said, okay. <laughs> and then the next day, <laughs> the news would come. And so it's just been amazing. And I'm still, even now, I'm amazed at what God does. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh, sure. It's awesome. When, when you are praying for someone or mm -hmm. when, when, you're, when you're in a meeting and you sense God directing you to a person, what do you hear inside? What do you see inside? How, do, how does it come to you? That, 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 that whether it's a word of knowledge or a word of wisdom, how, how does it come to you? Uh, various ways. Uh, I hear God speaking like you talk, but more than that, uh, in my spirit, I hear God talking. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray for this person. I, want, I go to church, I minister at conferences, and before I leave the room, I know nothing. Sometimes I do. I'll pray. I remember Catherine Kuhlman saying that she would stand behind the curtains and say, God, help me, mm -hmm. you know, and, and we're just at the mercy of his help. Yes. Something that was said earlier here um, th about the anointing, and I don't take it for granted, but through all of those the process, I've learned something about the gifting that God has given me. And... It's amazing. I'll go to church, come to a meeting, and I'll get there, and then God starts talking. He said, you do such and such. And then you stand out there on faith. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's just amazing. Yeah, because, it, it, and what people may not realize is that when God gives you a piece of information, mm -hmm. he doesn't tell you what came before, mm -hmm. and he doesn't tell you what came after. So you're holding on to this information. You have no idea how it applies to people. You're FedEx. Yeah. 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 You're UPS. You're the, you yeah. just deliver the message. And a lot of times I forget because, and then what happens, it keeps us from getting puffed up. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, that's so, that's so powerful. What are, what are some of your observations right now as you look at the prophetic and 
how it's proliferated mm -hmm. um, in the last 10, 15 years. What are some of your observations? Uh, and and some, from, from a place of being a seasoned voice, to, wh wh whatever your observations are, what, what do you see, what do you sense? Well, we're bringing back integrity to this office. It's uh, not for profit. Say it. Go ahead. Say it. But we are servants. Say it. That's good. We're not for hire. Say it. Right. I always say God could use anybody to do this. And so uh, we, we minister, and in this hour that we are living in, we need a prophetic voice. I believe God is doing that. In every house, there should be a prophetic voice. I believe that as a servant of God, I'm assigned to pastors. I come to uh, speak and confirm what you've already said. A prophetic voice comes to change your life. Or more than that, I don't come to speak to you, I come to speak to the church. Right, right, right. right. So we, we, that's some of my observation is that we're, and uh, this sensationalism is going to change. Yes, sir. Talk about that. That, that is, um, we need to understand that, again, for everything that's positive, there's a negative. You know, yeah. you have good doctors, you have mm -hmm. bad doctors, okay? But God has a way. And in this hour that we live in, we're going to see a transformation in this office. You see, men and women uh, that will hear the voice of God and not become arrogant. Yeah. You see, and let me say this because it's so important to young ministers and people on the field and people that are availing themselves. You need to be assigned to a pastor or someone uh, that can coach you. I pastored 12 years, and I understand. These gifts have to be honed in on. That's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. That's right. And they're honed in on, like the bishop said, uh, through our trials. That's right. We don't know what we have. It wasn't until uh, Joseph went to prison. If you know that whole story. And when he got there, uh, he began to tell them this and that. And, and so he works development. I hear development. It's a, it's a process, and it, it develops over time. And in this season, we're going to see the emergence of great, great people.